Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I'm sharing an adorable collection of Eastern gnome inspiration. We have eight different sets of gnomes. I'll put the patterns for each of these down below if they require them. Let's get started with some fun Easter DIYs. Hi there friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and today I'm introducing a brand new pattern for a bunny gnome. They have boop, cute little feet, those ears, some adorable whiskers, and you can make this thing multiple ways. Boop, if you'd like to make them with me, boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. Now, this is a fun set of gnomes who wants to know, have you joined the Facebook group yet? Uh, but really, this is a very versatile pattern. You don't have to do the bunny feet. You can use just regular feet. They're between 10 and 12 inches tall, depending on how you do the hat. Now, there are some options for you in the pattern, which I'll link down below. And this is one I made with no beard, but just cute little white whiskers. But I'm gonna go ahead and make another one here for you. And we're gonna start off by cutting all of the pattern pieces, making note of any um, tips and tricks that I give you for this one. You're gonna end up with two pieces for a base, a hat piece, two feet pieces, two arm pieces, two sets of mittens, and then ears. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a staged approach to this. So the first thing to do is the body. We're going to start off at the very top. We're gonna to go to where it says stop. We're gonna start and stop our stitches. If you're new to sewing, that just means that none of your sewing will come undone. And then we're going to next sew the feet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn them inside out, add a very small amount of stuffing, and then we're gonna make sure that that back half inch or so is not stuffed at all. So you can see here, we looking at the back, you can see that the bunny feet are aligned and pointing out. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're just gonna pull the wrong side back piece, this here with the seam, and we're gonna pull that back and just pin it out of the way real quick. Cause what we need is this front edge. Now you're gonna take both of your feet and because again, we want the feet to go out, we're actually gonna to have to put them facing inward to that seam. So that's just a tricky bit I wanted to detail. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna place these two feet along that edge, making sure you've got some hang over and then we're gonna pin them in place. Now the one little tricky thing is just pin one and then line up the other one at the front edge uh, where the little paw part will be because that way you won't have two missized feet. All right, so now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these on slowly, individually, and your sewing machine is gonna be able to handle it. I know it's fleece, I know it's gonna be thick, but look at this, it's super easy. So we're gonna sew both of those on separately, making sure we start and stop our stitches, and then we're gonna take our bottom piece, right side is gonna be facing in, and we're just gonna attach it like we do every other uh, base piece, and that is just splitting this circumference of the opening with the base and all you're doing is just pinning it to each of these areas in place you won't have any puckering you won't have any scrunching I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done so you can see here it all perfectly is flat so then you're gonna take that and again pay attention to what is called out in the pattern because you're going to want to make sure you catch all pieces of this this is the base of your gnome it needs to be strong so you can see everything's good all right, so now we're gonna move on. We're gonna start and stop our stitches on the hat. You don't need to hem it. We're going to make both arms and we're going to top stitch whatever inlay you have for the ear. Then you're going to sandwich those two pieces together, right sides together. Pay attention to the pattern details or it'll be very difficult to make this thing look like a bunny. <laughs> and then we're going to make sure after everything is done, we're gonna make sure we have everything counted. You can check your pattern. We're gonna turn out the body piece. So you can see we're gonna turn out the hat and the body. So we do the same little part with the tips. There you go, and now you can see his little feet. And then you're gonna turn out the arms. Uh, you can see the ears here using your end of your pen or pencil. Just rub those seams together. And if you do wanna add a piece of pipe cleaner in those, you can do that now. And then you're just gonna make sure your seam is on the inside. Um, 
of the arm and then you're just gonna put on the mittens as a placeholder now here's the fun part when watching a gnome come together so you can use at least one cup of poly beads maybe a little more uh, before you start stuffing i get asked a lot uh, why the, the gnomes aren't high-end or fluffy or whatever but i'll tell you it really starts with the stuffing okay make sure that you have a solid body now this is for a bendable hat so you're going to use a 12 gauge wire and we're going to bend one end and put it all the way up to the tippy top of that body piece and then you're gonna cut all the way down you're gonna cut plus one inch so that you can actually roll that bottom piece and make it a 90 degree piece pull it out of the top thread it all the way through the bottom of the body and then you're gonna make sure that tippy top goes all the way to the edge again and you're gonna glue the wire to the seam you're not going to add glue in the middle because we're going to stuff it okay so just make sure that you're holding the wire up against that seam and then you just stuff it like normal and again stuffing it completely will make a difference so i roll it in between my hands i drop it on the table i squish it and you can see if my hand goes in too far i add a little bit more stuffing so once I think I have it stuffed enough, I'm gonna lay it down and add stuffing right at that seam area. But I'm gonna grab that wire, so you can see me picking up that wire because I'm, I'm going to need that wire. I wanna secure it so it doesn't move, right? So I'm going to sew it. You can glue it, but I don't recommend it. I just don't think it's secure when you're moving something around that much. So all I'm, all I'm doing is sewing up the hole and grabbing the wire in between those uh, stitches. I tied it off and then I just put the needle through the body, pulled it really tightly, and then cut it, and it disappears into the body. And now you can bend it or move it any way you want, it's secure. And that's what I've got so far. All right, so before we move on, we're actually going to make the feet before we put anything else on this little cutie. Get a larger needle, I use a darning needle and or tapestry needle. Use whatever color embroidery thread you'd like, do not split it. Go up through the middle of the foot and the bottom, wrap around the thread. You can see I have way too much thread here. Maybe cut a 16 inch piece, not 30, whatever I cut. And so once you pull it taut, watch, boom, there's a little bunny toe. Okay, now we're just gonna repeat that again. So going up through the center of the uh, bottom of the foot and then over, get tangled up in your embroidery thread. <laughs> and then pull it taut. Bam, there's another bunny toe. So I repeated this twice to make sure that you could really see this definition. Be sure not to pull too hard on the second try because then you'll have a, like a little lumpy bit. And then to tie it off, I just put it through the top, went through, down onto the bottom again, threaded it through all of those um, threads and then tied knots, cut it off and added a tiny bit of hot glue. And then I just repeated it for the second foot. So you're gonna slip on the hat and bend down everything a little bit and you're finding the position of the nose. So I put on either side those pins. Any beard style is gonna work for you. I just wanted to be able to have a little tuft around. So I cut a triangle, which was already cut, it was a scrap. And then I cut opposite, I cut another triangle, put it on top the opposite way, split the fur, added the wood bead, and then now I'm cutting three different lengths of black embroidery thread. And these are gonna be my whiskers. You can use white, you can use pink, you can use whatever, silver, gold. And I'm just gonna take a little piece or a little bit of Mod Podge on a paintbrush and make sure I get every bit of these threads. Again, you're not splitting these so that they can be thick enough to see. So you're just gonna paint them and then we're gonna set them off to dry. I did run them through my fingers to make sure everything was connected. While those are drying, just go ahead and get your hat piece. Measure 1.5 inches from the center bottom and then measure three quarters of an inch from that center piece and mark about a half inch line. That's where you're going to cut for our ears. You don't need to make your, you don't need to actually make huge uh, dark lines on your hat. Uh, I just did that so that you all could see it. You will be able to hide it. Um, okay, so once now your, your your whiskers are dry, right? So we're gonna go get that silicone mat again, tuck them all together, add a little tiny bit of hot glue, let it set while you go get your finger guard, and then press it down. So once you have them together, get your thumb and finger guard and kind of roll it in between. 
while that's setting we're going to split up a little bit of the fur so you can see here up one up two and what I'm trying to do is get to the fabric backing there it is you can see it right in there that's because everything sticks better when you glue it to the fabric backing noses whiskers doesn't matter so I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue and then press that right there in the center and kind of pull it up so it really distributes that glue and we can get a nice grip. Now don't put down the hair until the actual glue is dry so you can just see there. And now you can style it any way you want. All right, so now because we know exactly where the nose is, I'm gonna put a drop of hot glue here, remove the other pin, and then I'm gonna line up the nose, not the top of your beard, okay? So we measured where that nose needed to be. Next, we're just gonna secure it all the way around. It's coming together. I won't sing. All right, so now I'm just gonna position my hat on and then bend it all down after I get it all the way up to the tippy top because again, we don't need any stuffing in the hat because we have the body. So once I have it all where I want it, I'm gonna position the back down with two pins. I'm gonna make sure that seam is aligned and I have my little holes on either side of our nose. I'm gonna finalize these mittens here. I'm just gonna add hot glue to secure them, but you can tie them with strings, sew them by hand, whatever you want. You can use wood beads, anything you want. This is just for inspiration. So once you have your hands ready, uh, don't get too excited because we're just gonna pin them in place. And the reason is, is because I want to make sure that whatever my little Nomi is holding, uh, I have made. So I'm just gonna go ahead, pin these in place, and then I'm gonna move to the ears. You are going to squish the bottom and push it through, just like that. And you squish the bottom and push it through so that it creates a nice little like squishy part in the middle. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So, and then you're just gonna make, make sure that they're even. So really turn this around, look to see if you have pipe cleaner in there, bend them however you want them. Just make sure that you, they look good and make sure that wherever you cut is tucked in so you can't see it. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. I didn't have any like extra accoutrement to decorate my little bunny with, so I'm gonna make something. I took half of a K cup that I cut with scissors. I traced a bottom. I glued it on. This is just like tan colored felt. And then I wrapped the rest of the K-Cop in a too big for it piece of scrap felt. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to make all these little tab cuts and then be able to fold it down and glue it on the inside and burn myself. So use a pencil or those little finger, there you go, those things. Cut off the excess, fill it with this paper, grassy stuff and add a little bit of whatever you're putting in there. I took a bit of 12 gauge wire that I used for the hat and I put, or that I used for the body, I'm sorry, and I just wrapped some felt around it. Real easy, super easy, and then I cut it off and then I just made it look a little more polished by making sure every piece was down, bent it in the center, kind of rounding it, seam is on the bottom. And then I'm test fitting it, so no glue quite yet, because I want to know if it's gonna cover my Nomi face, and it does. So bam, three quarters of an inch gets cut off, and then I glue it into the basket. On the sides and on the bottom. There we go. Now it doesn't cover my Nomi face. And I just secured that egg in there with some glue. Set it aside, and let's secure down our ears. So you're gonna glue the ear to the body, and then you're gonna run out of glue. Uh, so you're gonna glue the ear, hat to the ear. There you go. And then you're going to do the other side. You're gonna glue the ear to the body. And then you're going to glue the hat to the ear. So you're just going to roll over that bottom edge. You don't have to hem it because we're not done. But we do need to make sure it looks even and everything like that. Flip over your gnome, remove the pins in the back. You're gonna do the same thing we do with every other gnome. Fold up the edge, secure the back seam so it lines up. Now you can work on the arms. I like to position whatever it is I'm working with. So I'm going to put it on his hands first. Here's one hand and position the beard. And then here's the other hand. And now I can glue down the arms. So I'm just gonna lay it down on its side, remove the pins and glue the arm to the body and the hat to the arm. And again, you're just gonna roll down that edge so it creates sort of a hem and secure everything down. 
It's easy, right? This part goes so fast. It did take me about an hour to make this gnome. Um, but you're just gonna repeat that for the other arm and now you can add your little cotton tail. So for the girl, I added a very large two inch pom-pom uh, that I sewed on and for this little guy, I just glued on a one inch pom-pom. And there you have it, they're all done. What do you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments below and get this pattern, it's gonna be a fun one. Thank you so much for being here, I appreciate it. If you want more, I do have a playlist for you. Please like and subscribe. Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesinrainboots.com here with an oh so floppy ear bunny gnome styled two different ways. If you'd like to make it, boop, boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so that I know you're here crafting with me. Now here's who we are going to be making. We're going to go beyond a sock gnome, even though these look like the squishy little cuties and look at the little bunny tails. And we're just going to match up with our faux fur. We're going to wire some ears and let others flop. So we need to get started with the pattern. This is a hat and uh, ear pattern, also two body sizes. We're going to need a glue gun, scissors, uh, pliers, an X-Acto knife, a needle, an embroidery thread, uh, and some sewing pins, some faux fur, a wood ball for a nose. I'm going to be using a one-inch wood round. You can use anything you have. This is just Mongolian and white. Two different colors of fleece. My primary is going to be white with a blue accent. And then I'm going to wire some of the ears. So this is just Doris's floral wire. And you need something to measure uh, everything with. So just a note on the floral wire, this is the easy bend type. So I'm going to do all of the cutting for this pattern with a pair of scissors. You can either cut a 12 by 8, 12 inches wide, 8 inches tall, or 13. So the pink gnome I made was 12, and this one will be 13. We're going to glue with right sides together the bottom and the long tall edge. That's it to get started. I get asked a lot if I can recreate the box gnome body that I have in a popular free pattern uh, for sewing, I get asked a lot. So I'm trying to incorporate a few more of these hot glued box bottom gnomes. They are super easy to make and they come together fairly quickly. So I'm leaving about a half inch at the top and then I'm going to make one note about fleece. We want, if you don't have four-way stretch fleece, you want your hat to be stretchy on the width. Okay, so when you cut your hat pattern out, this is the hat base, make sure the width is where the stretch is, all right? So do pin these two pieces together. We'll be working with the brim here. I'm just going to put them right sides together so I'm turning up this brim on the wrong side of the fabric. Both sides, and it's just a half inch or so, but you can go deeper. This is a versatile pattern. Uh, it's super cute too, and it's fun. So. Ears, you don't have to do this, but I thought it'd be cute to put the right sides together of two different colors of fleece and just pin that pattern on, cut it out, and then pin them and save it for later, okay? There's a lot of save it for laters because we will be using hot glue. So the right sides of these are together. You're going to need a detail tip glue gun. You're going to need either hemostats, which are a little bit longer, or a set of pliers. All right, you need something to measure here. So in order to be able to turn these out, we're going to leave the bottom one and a half inches. So that's 1.5 inches. And you can measure it with, you know, anything you've got, but you have to make sure that stays open. We're gonna be able to turn it through that opening. So all I'm gonna do here is use a detail tip glue gun and just add a little bit on either side at 1.5 inches. So I know not to go farther than that. And then I'm gonna put my entire arm and wrist on the table so I get a nice, solid, non-shaky glue application. I'm just gonna make a nice little, little, you know, section of hot glue all the way around this thing. And no matter if you're putting wire into it or not, when you do better on the hot glue, you do better when you turn it inside right, or right sides out, you know what I mean? So if you take some time on this part, you're just gonna help yourself out. So do that for both of the ears and then set them aside, and I mean it mean it. 
We've let this body sit, so now it's time to open up this little rectangle bag you've just made. By the way, you can make an easy drawstring bag this way too. What we're gonna do is split the sides and you have a diamond at the bottom. You're gonna take about an inch of the fabric and you're gonna put both points down onto the center seam. You're gonna wanna use a generous amount of hot glue here. Okay, generous amount of hot glue there, flip it over while you're still holding the other side, generous amount of hot glue here, across the, like, I call it a crossbar, it's not, and then you're going to want to hold it until it sets, for real, and then don't touch it, set it aside, I told you, a lot of setting aside, okay, so for the hat, you got a lot of options, for this little one, I put it at the top of the curve, and then they easily flop over, you can put them lower to have little ears that sort of sit behind the, like, sad little bunny, I don't know, they remind me of a sad bunny, but either way, they all start out by gluing from the brim up two inches, okay? So that's where you have to have to be able to cover up all your fur and the majority of the body. So start by gluing up either side. Again, right sides are together. You've already added the brim and you're just gonna do two inches on both sides. And then can you guess, we're gonna let that set. <laughs> so we're just gonna put it off to the side and not touch it. We are going to measure four inches wide by two inches tall for a beard. Now you can make it a rectangle beard, you can make it a V-shaped beard, or you can make it a U-shaped beard. None of it matters, it's your choice. Like this isn't regimented, right? Four inches basically covers either the 12 inch body or the 13 inch body really well. And it looks nice without dragging the ground with the fur. That's all. So on this one, I'm going to make a U-shaped body. And if you're new to cutting faux fur, use an X-Acto knife and just cut the very backing of that fabric of the fur. And then watch when you pull it off. I don't know why I said that, but it's really cool. Look, We need our one inch wood ball. Not yet though. Just have it over there. It keeps falling off my table. So here's what we got. A body, a hat, two ears, a ball, and our beard. Guess what? We are ready to start with assembly. I'm going to turn this bag inside or right sides out and look at the little box bottom you made. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So simple. Then I'm going to take one cup of poly pellets and I'm going to add that to the bottom. Now, just FYI, you can add more. I'm not going to tell you not to. Um, but here's where you really need to add a good bit of stuff. So the poly stuffing, so polyfill or stuffing, you can get at the craft store, you can rip it out of a pillow, or you can get it from Dollar Tree Stuffed Animals. You're just gonna wanna fill it almost all the way to the top, make sure there's a good inch of space left, cut some embroidery thread, thread it through an embroidery needle, and make a running stitch all the way around the top of the body, about an inch away. I started at the back seam just cause I did. You don't have to. You can literally start in the front. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you didn't tie a knot and you're not pulling that string all the way through. I'm speeding this part up just to get to the good stuff here. We're going to exit the body exactly right, right next, an eighth of an inch next to where we started. And then we're just going to pull tight. I'm just tamping everything down, making sure everything is settled. Look at that box bottom. Love it. And then we're going to tie this super duper tight. Sometimes I put two loops before tight, tightening it only because um, I tend to snap my embroidery thread without it. So I then tied a series of knots because I'm paranoid, cut off the excess, hot glued the knots because did I mention I was paranoid? And then I add a little hot glue into the center of the join as well. Now drop it, make sure it drops every single time and then set it aside. <gasps> Here's my favorite part. Are you ready? You ready for this? All right. So as I mentioned, these are unwired. They're super cute because they're hot glue. They have a little bit of structure to them, okay? But they don't stand up on their own straight up. We're going to do one of those like that so I can show you that, but then we're going to do the other one wired. Now, you can use your hemostats or you can use pliers. Grab the tip and then look gentle. Listen, gentle. Sometimes us crafters. We're not so gentle, but you see how gentle I'm being? Just gentle, like you're petting a very angry, you know, big kitty or something. Look at that. Comes right through. 
Look at that. Okay, now here's the part that's kind of frustrating. Rub the entire seam all the way around between your fingers. I'm not gonna edit this out because I want you to see how long it takes. This is a true thing. You can also use like a bone folder or the blunt edge of your scissors or a bamboo skewer. But there you go, you've gotta roll out all those edges, okay? All right, so this is the Doris floral wire. Don't do it like this. You gotta add a whole bunch that's gonna go into the body. Get me? Because you don't want that wire to move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little extra down here. And it doesn't have to be perfect up here. We're not even gonna put it in yet. But I wanna make sure I cut it off. Always pliers have this handy little wire cutter at the end of the little gator mouth. I don't know what that, I don't know the parts of the pliers, y'all. I stole it from my husband. All right, take the pliers. I can't find my humus dads. I know I have them. Um, I know I moved them, but yeah, I'm not going to make you watch this again, but basically you do the same thing. Pull it out and rub it all in your fingers. Just roll it around. If you are sewing, you can just press this, but if you're sewing, you're not going to have the same problem anyway. So this is just, everybody keeps asking me for a glue version of this. So I'm going to give you a glue version of this, this hundred percent hot glue, except for the hand sewing, which you technically don't have to do. You can tie that up in a nice big ball. I don't recommend it, but all right, now we're just going to pull, pull these out to the edges and then twist it, but not yet. Okay. So we're going to actually put this into the hat and then twist it at the bottom here. But you can see it's naturally crossing over. Just don't touch it. Okay, cool stuff coming. Take our little hat, remove the penny pin pins. Now, we're gonna use uh, a create a front. It doesn't matter, the seams are on the side. So whichever side the front of your hat is gonna be, that's the side the color is pointing towards. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So we wanna make sure that the color is on the front of the hat. So if you've got an ugly piece of fabric, we're going to line up the place where it's glued on the edge of our hat, okay? So we want to be able to catch all glued piece inside our join. This is really important, okay? Because you got floppy bits at the end, remember? All right, so you can put them to the side, remember again, I told you over here, you can put them in the curve of the hat to the side, they'll cross over on the inside of the hat. This one here, you can put it a little further down. Uh, you can twist them to where the seams are pointing straight up. There's a whole lot of stuff that you can do here. I'm gonna try it this way. I'm gonna put them on the top of the hat. Pretty far apart still. Hey, again, you see, remember I told you don't twist it? Now you can twist it. Any part that's sticking out of your hat, you can twist that part. Just don't twist them on the inside yet. All right, here is the fun. It's not really fun. You're gonna wait a while. You're gonna glue down the, the back of the hat to the ear. So we're gonna do this side as well. Make sure it's not twisted because it will stay that way once you glue it down. All right, so you're gonna glue the hat to the back of the ear. And then you're gonna glue the center piece. So the two hat pieces together. Make sure you get the sides of the ears as well. You gotta catch all this just like you would when you were sewing, right? So just tap it, you don't need to press it. We don't want a huge seam here. And then come over to the side. Again, you're gonna get the side of the ear and then all the way down to where you already glued. Again, my arm is all the way on the table. My wrist is on the table. So is some hot glue, look at that. All right, other side. And again, nothing except the waiting has been edited out here, okay? So I'm not speeding anything up. This is literally how long it takes to make. And it's super cute. Add about five minutes to waiting for hot glue. Once that's all set, flip it over and do the back side. So now you're gluing the hat to the colored part of your fleece. I picked it up, just make sure everything is joined. And guess what I do? I set it aside. And then I make a pom-pom tail. I cut about a one inch square of the same faux four I'm using for the beard. I'm gonna take each point and I'm gonna glue it into the center. You don't wanna glue the fur on top of the fur. You wanna glue the fabric backing to the fabric backing. That'll give you the best join. Now you can also like use a pre-made pom-pom. I was, I was about to say I didn't know where they are, but that's not true. I know exactly where they are. I'm just too lazy to go get them. All right, so now I'm gonna roll that in between my hands and then I'm gonna give it a haircut. This is kind of messy, but if you have a limp brush, it's quick rolling, or you can be like me and just toss it to the floor. 
which is boop, what I do there. And then I just put that aside because I'm not ready, but look, this is dry. So then we just bloop. Y'all, look at that. I'm so proud of myself for this pattern. And the reason is, is because I've messed this up so many times on my own. As, as creative as I am, boy, the hot glue sometimes stumps me. All right, just to get our fitting, you don't have to thread the wire through the body yet. Just make sure that little part that we tied is in the center at the top. Pull down the hat. You can see the wire sticking out. Don't worry. We're just going to be putting on the beard right now. Once you have it where you want it, you determine the amount of scrunch in your hat. The 12-inch body with this same pattern has more scrunch than the 13-inch body. But you could raise up this hat and give it even more scrunch if you want. I'm tucking that faux fur underneath, centering it in the body, and then I'm going to glue that down. Generous glue on the back of that faux fur. Try not to get any glue on the fur, and you are golden. Y'all, I'm, I'm happy. It would, it, would, it would embarrass me if I told you when I'm making this. It's still really cold outside. It's nowhere near Easter. But I wanted to start on all my Easter gnomes this year because I didn't get a good chance last year. So I split the fur to the fabric backing in the center of the beard, added a good bit of hot glue, and then added my gnome nose on. I figured out where those wires were going to poke into the body. A very tiny slit. And instead of... Threading them through just like that. Don't do that. Bend them down or even in a U because that way they won't poke out through the bottom uh, or the side. So then once you have those threaded in there, just make sure they're sitting close to the bottom and then just put on the hat exactly how you want it. Just pull it down on either side and make sure the front and backs are the right amount of squoosh that you want. Go ahead and add a little glue to the inside brim of the hat and then pop that down onto the top of the nose. If you have any glue that seeps out, just wipe it off with your fingernail. And now it's time to glue down the back of the hat all the way around. And you're almost done. You could have bow on a little girl. I know that didn't look in the middle, but it was in the middle, I promise. I'm just gonna add on my little pom-pom and this guy's done. One floppy ear, one posable ear. You can do both of them posed. But now I have two and I'm gonna start an army. Anyway, let me know down in the comments, what do you think of this sweet little Easter craft? I appreciate you being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffleshandrainboots.com and today we're making a less than 10 minute Easter gnome bottle topper. He's cute and quick. And if you'd like to make him, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. It does help the channel. Thank you so much. You can see from his tippy tippy top of his hat all the way down to his adorable tail. We've got some fun details incorporated in this and it's super easy to do whether you sew or glue. So you can see we can scrunch it up or keep it straight, whatever you'd like. Full bottle wrap or just partial and cool little details here like the ears and the whiskers. As for supplies, I'm going to start out by using a rosé bottle. This is what I'm gifting. I'm going to use white Mongolian fur. This is a long pile. I'm going to use a white cotton, or what do you call it, pom-pom, embroidery thread. End up not using these Easter eggs as tags. You need something for a nose, a wood round, piece of cork, felt ball. You need felt, felt for the ears, and then I'm using a sweater. You can do this without the sweater, but it makes it so easy just using the sleeve. So the very first part of this is you're just going to decide if your sweater works for your bottle, meaning it's not being stretched out too poorly, it's not have a lot of holes, and then you're just going to size it. So you can do a full wrap all the way down, you can do a partial wrap like I'm doing, it's your choice. And I'm just going to hold where I wanted to cut and just snip that straight off. The cool part is that you can get two hats doing it this way, so do pay attention to how you cut going to be super easy. Give it a lint roll. Pull off any pile uh, pieces because if let's say you washed it and dried it and you weren't supposed to. Flip it right side out. Go two inches up from the bottom of the sleeve and then all the way to the other side. So you can see my seam is on the left and that's where I'm going to start my two inch rise and I'm going to go all the way up to the top with a ruler and a rotary cutter but you can use scissors. 
And this, this is the other gnome hat. All right, to assemble the hat, you can use a sewing machine or you can use a hot glue gun. This is a Surebonder Detail Tip Glue Gun. It takes mini glue sticks. It is not dual temperature and it has a cord, but I absolutely love this guy. It has not let me down yet. All right, so we're just gonna glue that all the way up along that seam, all the way to the tippy point, and then set it aside to dry. For the Mongolian fur beard, I'm going to cut three and a half by about two inches high. And I'm just, you can see I've got my one side cut over there, so I'm using that. You can choose whatever shape you'd like. Mine is a rectangle. To cut, I'm using an X-Acto knife and just barely pushing down to cut only that fur fabric backing. So I'm going to show you here, you're just going to um, use something pointy. I'm using rounded off scissors here to pop out that very tip of the hat. See this? Bang it on the table a couple times and you can see. You can flip it up like this to hide the ears or you can leave it flat. So I am going to um, show you, I'm going to build this so that you can still see part of the label on my bottle. You don't have to. You can pull it all the way down, whatever, whatever you would like. But you can see here, I'm just getting an idea where this is going to sit and that way I know where to glue my beard. So speaking of gluing the beard, you again, you can glue it like this where you have a piece of it raised up at the bottom, like fold it up like a hem to hide the ears, or you can go straight like I'm doing here. So I'm working on the wrong side of the fabric, and then I'm gonna put something in between so that the glue doesn't seep through because it's just knit fabric. All right. So now we're going to build the beard first, but I just want you to get an idea of how much glue you're going to have. Make sure everything is right directly in the center. And now I'm going to put the nose onto the beard. So before I start, I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to split the fur to its fabric backing in the middle. And then I'm going to put the nose just down from the top of the edge, maybe a half inch or so. So in order to do that, I'm just going to put some hot glue down and press my wood round right into that area. When it's done, drying. I'm just going to put hot glue on the bottom edge here of the inside of my sleeve. Again, remember we turned it right side out and I'm going to press just the faux fur back or the faux fur right into the front of this. It's pointing down, meaning it's going to be flipped right side out when we flip our hat. out. And now I'm going to glue down just the tip of the hat right to the nose. You can see mine's kind of folded up right there. We're just going to pull it down and glue it right here. Just a little bit of glue if needed. Get that hot glue strand I just got on there off. Swoop. All right, for the tail, I'm using this pre-made pom-pom garland from one of the craft stores. I've had it forever. Just trim off that little excess there. And then to glue it on, I'm just gonna flip this all over and actually put my little, my shell. You don't have to use a shell. I'm gonna be painting those a little bit later today. So that's why I have it there, but you're just gonna put the hot glue and then before you press it down, make sure you have something there so the glue doesn't seep through to the front. And once that dries, you've started your little bunny. Now you can obviously leave off this tail, leave off the ears and you have a five minute uh, wine bottle cover, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go a little extra and do all the ears. They're really easy to make. Okay, so all I'm gonna be using is white stiff Felt. You can see it's see-through. It doesn't end up looking see-through when it's on your piece, but it's not expensive. You can get it in the kids section of the craft store. So I'm going to draw in white gel pen, just the random shape of a bunny ear. I didn't use a template. It's just wider at the bottom than it is at the top. It comes to a point at the top and fans out in the middle. I think by this point, if you're watching this video, you probably know what a bunny ear could look like. So I'm just gonna trim off the other side of that and then I'm gonna make sure that comes directly to a, like a nice fine point right up here. And then I'm just gonna size it, make sure, cause I didn't size it before. You can see mine is about two and a half inches tall and I'm just gonna use that same ear to trace onto, again, white gel pen, tracing that onto the felt for a second ear. For the inserts, you can use pink felt, you can use fur, whatever you have, but I wanted to match my little hat so I'm just cutting off a piece of the sweater sleeve where we had just cut it off and then fold it in half and do the same exact shape just smaller making sure it just fits inside my white uh, outline ear there there we go now I will say that I learned if you glue these on with huge glumpy glue beads they will show through so instead put your hot glue on and then kind of move it around 
just so that everything it doesn't matter if you're using felt or you're using the sweater um, it will show through so you just want to use a little bit it doesn't matter it will stick just again spreading it around and then popping it on easy peasy you can either assemble the ears on like I'm doing here or take it off but I'm just using a small amount of hot glue to just affix the very bottom right to the hat and if you can't see what I'm doing here, there you go. I'm just going to split the difference, making sure the nose is in the middle. You can make them wide. You can make them right down at the bottom near the beard, whatever you would like. All I'm doing is just making sure they're on. And I want them to stick out <laughs> like that. All right, so for decorating, I didn't know what kind of stuff I wanted to do, but I knew I needed whiskers. So first I'm going to use dark gray embroidery thread. I'm just going to cut about mm, three inches of that. I'm going to split that. There's six strands. I want four of them. Each whisker is two strands of embroidery thread for me. You can do whatever you want. You can use wire. You can use Mod Podge to make them stiff whiskers. But I just took two strands, put a little hot glue, tucked it up under the nose. And then I did the other one. And I pushed up the bottom. So I put a little glue directly. You'll see here. So I'm just separating it there. You can see I'm going to put a little glue directly on the bottom of the nose and then press that up into there for my second whisker. And then I'm going to scrunch up the very fur so it joins and hides that. I use these little, I don't know, I think they're paper flowers on little wired stems and just cut two of them off. I just wanted one little flower on each ear, but you could do a crown. Um, you could do a nice little fuzzy thing. Put a little piece of fur there, whatever you'd like. I'm just going to glue these down with a smidge of hot glue. Try not to burn myself. And that's it. <laughs> Isn't he cute? I love him, but let me know in the comments. What do you think? Would you do this quick craft? As always, thank you so much for being here. Please like and subscribe, and here is a gnome playlist. Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffleshandrainboots.com, and today we're going to make a floppy ear Dollar Tree bunny gnome. If you'd like to make it, just boop, <laughs> stick around. As always, please give this video a like so that I know you're here crafting with me and it really does help out the channel. So look at these cute little details, little bunny feet. We have these amazing floppy ears. Um, of course a bunny tail and these super simple to make. So I'm going to be sharing the supplies I used. I have a pattern linked down below and I'm just sharing different ways to use this pattern using Dollar Tree socks. These are just fuzzy socks and this Dollar Tree microfiber car wash mitt. Of course, these little booties everyone requests me to use and then some sort of nose, a scissors, a glue gun and the pattern. So I am going to be using about a cup of poly pellets, obviously poly fill. And now let's get started. I don't believe in wasting anything. And so set it aside. We're going to use it in a second. We want to create, how should we put this? A chunky gnome, a robust gnome, rotund, almost circular. So I'm going to put all of the weight into this sock. And I know you can do this with a whole lot of fill, but I like my guys to be a little hefty. You know what I mean? Need some weight. So when I say that we need it to be round, this is a four inch diameter sock gnome. He's, he's chunky. I'm shooting from far away, so he doesn't look like it. But you're just going to seal off that sock. I used some embroidery thread, double knotted, wrapped around, and then also sealed the knot with some glue and scissors. Um, I'm paranoid. Okay, so now you can roll this down or you can cut this off. It, either one doesn't matter. Just don't let it stay upright. Okay, and it'll make sense in just a second. So the brim is not going to be used, but I'm just using that as a thing. I'm folding over this microfiber wash mitt or whatever from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to place the hat pattern piece on this. Now, I know when you're looking at this for the first time, that's against my little hand. I promise this is a pretty big pattern, but because we're going to hot glue it, again, this is all hot glue, we are not 
uh, going to waste any of the space here. I promise. Okay, so that thing kind of sheds. Pull off all the extras before you glue it because it's going to affect the, your your um, adhesion, okay? So once we get that off, all we're doing is just creating a brim. Now you can use a half inch brim like I'm using here, or you can do a full one inch brim, and it depends on what you want the look of the hat to do in the end. So I want a lot of those little wrinkly scrunches uh, in the front over the nose, so I'm just doing about a half inch brim here. And again, just straight across. You do not need that brim like the uh, hem piece you, if you just want to use a middle of one of these wash mitts. Now this is important. No matter how you decide to attach the ears, you're going to need to glue the bottom two inches from wherever you've glued from the brim up. So we're going to do that on both sides and it's important to let this all sit and let the glue set before you move on. So while we push that aside, we're just going to fold over this same wash mitt and you're going to cut two of these. I would recommend pinning the pattern directly on it and then keeping everything in place. Now don't like throw away any of this cut off. Try and get it exactly to the pattern because we're going to use it to make a tail. I know, but it, I promise I'll show you. Okay. So now you can see, I'm going to clean up that little extra piece. I'm just cutting the biggest one off and then moving that all out of the way. And then I'm gonna do just what we do with the faux fur pom-pom, except I'm just gonna make a little tiny one. Now, hey, the Dollar Tree does have white pom-poms. I have like multiple packages of them, but I'm just saying you can create your own pom-pom if you don't wanna head over to the store. So once you have all four corners done, now you're gonna glue them all together in the center, and then you have a little, just roll it in between your hand and you have a little pom-pom. <laughs> okay, now, as I mentioned, we are gonna not waste any of our materials. So pin your sock together, then pin on the pattern because those socks are slimy, they move. And anyway, you're gonna create um, the cut all the way around, but keep the biggest part if you want to use any pinks or blues for the bunny feet. Okay, you see how the um, sock is all curled over like that? I promise it's the same size, just pin it in place. And we need to talk about going slow a little bit because this is where uh, everything is really gonna come together in any hot glue pattern. Now, per the pattern, you are not gonna glue the bottom portion and I have it directly linked on the pattern, like stop here, because that way, no matter what material you're using, it will be able to be turned out easily. So again, I'm just gonna measure the same thing on the other side. I have my entire hand and wrist, or I'm sorry, my entire arm and wrist on the table with the glue gun. It's just a light bead of hot glue and just tippity tap. Don't press it because you actually don't wanna spread the glue out. You just want it to adhere to all these fibers. And then you just repeat with the other side. I do leave them pinned because those socks are squirrely. Okay. Head up the Dollar Tree for these little booties if you can find them. If not, there are gnome groups that are always de-stashing. So you're going to cut the same microfiber towel. I mean, talk about use, right? Uh, you're gonna cut a, an eight inch wide by five inch high piece. Now, is this absolutely necessary? No. Can you go a little tiny bit smaller? No. You can't because we're gonna do it the lazy girl way and that is to glue the actual booty right to the center of the vertically positioned uh, piece of fabric. And if you know me, you know I like easy, I like quick, and this is the fastest way to create these. So once you have the bottoms set, go back to that first one and just fold down the front and glue it. That's it. And then you're gonna tuck in each of these sides Glue them in between themselves so you're gluing the fabric to the fabric and the fabric to the inside of this little um, booty. And then just repeat it on the other side. You don't have to wait till this sets either. It's really nice. But I do recommend getting something sort of not your fingers because when we get to the back, it's going to be a little tight. And it's also going to be a little hot because hot glue is hot. So all I'm gonna do is do the same thing in the back. I'm gonna put it straight down in the center first and then fold in these two flaps. And now you've not only A, filled that cavity of the little shoe, but you've also made a nice little place for it to adhere to your bunny. All right, 
So here you go. Get that stick. See, it's really hot in there because I don't have any patience to wait. Okay, so now remember I mentioned we're going to save the little cast offs. If you're using pink or blue or yellow or whatever other color you can make for a bunny, use the extra pieces. It's really nice to coordinate it. And so I just cut off one big piece and two little pieces. Now I would love to tell you they are circles, but they're not. They're just clumps of fabric but don't worry just glue the very very center down press it down and then you start gluing around and don't worry you can trim it I would use smaller scissors than these massive ones but yeah you can trim it into the shape you want so if you've never worked with the fuzzy socks at the Dollar Tree they're a little frustrating and so I wanted to be able to give you a tip that was new and fresh and don't worry about it this is easy crafting right so we're just going to cut this after we glue it it's simple um, see I would use again smaller scissors but then I just glued everything down and then isn't that funny? They worked out perfectly. Also, if you don't have the patience for this, you can use felt or fleece or any other fabric that matches, okay? You don't have to do it my way. I just try and use everything I possibly can, and especially on Dollar Tree crafts, right? Okay, so we repeated the second one, and now we're gonna go back to the ears, remove the pins, and oops, the go, go to the opening at the bottom and do not pull it apart. So don't like take these two pieces and go yank. You can put your finger all the way up and push it through the bottom. Or if you're lazy and you have the pliers handy or hemostats, you can actually just put these all the way up to the top, press down the very top join, and then just kind of scooch it down. Don't like take the ends and like yank, but if you scooch it down, it goes all the way through. That's why we left that opening remember so easy peasy right and now you want to just roll all the seams between your fingers and then you can also use like a pen or a like something dull if you need to poke out any pieces like the very tip of the bunny ear or the sides you know whatever you you do but if you spend a good time with this the actual hot glue this part is so easy I love easy projects have I said that once maybe twice okay so I have those two now Okay, you're going to do this, whatever side you want the front to be, you're gonna put the actual pattern onto that side, not facing that side, but actually on top of that side. Okay, so in case you have a piece of fabric that's not great in the back, be sure you're putting the pretty part to the front of that. So you can put these in the center, you can put them on the side, you can put them anywhere. The pattern allows for all of them. Just make sure that the hot glue wherever you've started the hot glue on the ears is going to line up with the actual edge of the hat, okay? So again, you can put these side, you can put them even more sideways than this, but you can also put them in the middle. Again, just line up that hot glue so that you will be hot gluing the ear that is already hot glued, okay? And now I just pinned everything in place and now I'm going to go on the side of the ear and then down to where we actually already started. Um, hot glued and secured it. So again, you're just gonna tippity tappity tap and then remove the pins so that you can get it all the way across the middle. Again, down the side of the ear, all the way across, and then up the side of the other ear. Again, detail tip glue gun makes this process extremely easy. For those of you new here, I am using a Sure Bonder detail tip glue gun, and y'all, Amazon loves me because I refer y'all to them every single week. I love this glue gun. Okay, so again, we're gonna do down the side of the ear and all the way to the portion that we already sewed, or glued. So by the way, if you are impatient, I'm gonna ask you to set a timer because hot glue, when we do things like this where we're imitating a sewing pattern, you're gonna have to let it set. Just put it aside if you are impatient, okay? So once that side is set, you can flip it over and just do the actual adhesion to the back of the ear. And I'm going to be end up cutting off just the pink part. I leave the white part, but again, after this is all secure, you can actually cut those little tabs off. When I set it over there to um, dry, I'm just gonna cut whatever size beard you like, okay? So if yours is two inches, three inches, whatever it is, I'm gonna make a tiny little like U shape. It's not quite a V shape, but it's a U shape, and that's because I want to put my little feet right next to this beard on either side. So as you can see, an X-Acto knife works super. So do scissors or a box cutter.
So here is me cutting off just the pink part because I think it will show through. Again, that Dollar Tree microfiber towel is not like high, high quality. All right, so I'm just slipping on the hat to get an idea of where to actually glue on my beard. Mine is pretty high because his little chunkiness squishes out at the bottom. <laughs> Once I know where my hat is going to sit, I can just spread the fur to the fabric backing and add a generous portion of hot glue and attach my round. So for a nose, you can use a pom-pom fabric stuffed with fill, whatever you would like. I'm using a three-quarter inch wood bead. So I'm just going to glue these right to the front. Remember how I told you we had a nice little adhesion spot there that we created with all that extra fabric? Works perfectly. I accidentally dropped this guy off of my six foot cabinet where I'm storing my gnomes this year. And yeah, um, he's fine. <laughs> all right. So once that's set, I'm just going to squish down my hat and pull it all the way down to where I want it to be on the body. And see all those little wrinkles? That's what I want. Okay. So I'm going to attach the very top up here so that it stays in place. And then I'm going to attach it down the sides and along the bottom brim. I do add a little bit of hot glue right here to the inside brim of the hat and just pop that right onto the top of the nose so it stays in place. I glue down the very back and then I glued on his little tail. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Now you can add flowers or any other decorations, but me, I'm done. What do you think of this easy little bunny gnome? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Get the pattern and let me know if you love this like I do. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandramboots.com here to make a Dollar Tree Easter tree gnome. Look how cute he is. If you'd like to make it, boop, <laughs> stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting with me. I made this because Amazon was late on a delivery and I needed something for another craft, but I thought it turned out super cute. If you'd like to make them, here is what you need. I am going to be using bright spring colors. I have a little bit left of this pretty fur. These are resin boots. I got them at Aunt, uh, Michael's for 40% off yesterday. Some rocks for weight. I am going to use two or three of these uh, Valentine Day trees from the Dollar Tree. I'm thinking three is what we're going to need. I'm going to be using this microfiber towel, a nose of some kind, wood, bead, pom-pom, this very fabulous scrap of fur, and some decorations. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. All right, so the first thing I need to do is weigh down this. Uh, it's very light. It's just like a resin planter. And so I'm just going to pop in these two rocks, making sure that nothing is in the way of my trees. And then speaking of the trees, these are the Dollar Tree Valentine trees. They are not as robust as the Christmas trees. And when I pull them apart and put all of the pieces, see how the, all the pieces are going to go to one side? Otherwise, it looks a little sparse, friends, you know. So I'm going to pull all of these all one way. And although there are quite a few branches, again, there's these huge gaps in between each level of branch, and they look a little more sparse than the holiday trees, like the green or the white ones. So I don't know. We'll see. I think I'm going to need three at this point. So I have four on hand. Please let me know in the comments what I should do with the fourth one. All right. So again, I'm going to grab all these. You can discard the little three-piece plastic stand or figure out something else to do with them. I don't know yet. Maybe I should stop tossing those and recycling. All right, so now I'm just gonna make sure that I like the look of three instead of going to get four. And yes, I think three is gonna be perfectly fine for these boots. You can take off these little plastic um, cap things at the bottom. Just make sure that you glue in all of the bottom of this string, otherwise it will unravel. And you don't want to just spend like 20 minutes raveling that stuff back together. Ask me how I know. I'm going to put them together with some floral wire. This is a 12 gauge, really cheap from Daiso. Uh, Dollar Tree has it from time to time. Craft stores always have it. Uh, we're just going to join the very, very top, which will be covered by our hat, and the very, very bottom, which will be inside our boots. But you see how each section has these huge gaps? That's all I'm going to use. So I'm just lining up these gaps and moving the tinsel out of the way so that I can just wrap this around a few times. I do wrap it pretty tightly so I don't have to worry about it coming done when it's time to pack this decoration away. I'm just cutting it with these 
wire cutter section of my pliers that I have on hand, but honestly, you can cut this stuff with scissors. It's not, it's not real nice. All right. So I'm just fluffing everything out, making sure I like it, like where it is. Okay. Oh, see my Highland cow. Yeah. That's what I'm waiting on from Amazon. We'll just push that aside, put everything aside. Cause now we're moving on to another part of this adorable Easter guy. Okay. These are from the Dollar Tree. Super all the time you can find these in the automotive section they are microfiber towels you're just going to want to get an idea on the very very top of your trees maybe like three inches down what that width is cut the rest off now i am going to actually create a brim on the right side of the fabric so the fabric side that is showing so i'm just going to use my hot glue gun to roll it up about an inch all the way across and then because i don't want to see their little hem I'm going to roll it up again and glue that so you're losing a couple inches but because we're making a slouchy hat and because it's going to have a cut rise it doesn't matter I promise it will look cute all right so just glue that down making sure it is all the way secure and move on and you can add a brim of anything you'd like if you like to add a faux fur if you want to add yarn whatever you like make sure it is set put right sides together again we were working on the right side remember you're now going to go up a few inches over here and cut what is called a rise into this hat and that's because we want to be able to tuck the whole hat into like kind of it kind of like makes it curvy in the back so you can put something in the pocket like extra tinsel and it still curves around the the gnome booty if you will all right we're just going to glue this all the way up i am using a detail tip hot glue gun but if you notice it no longer has a detail tip because i just dropped it the girls came my daughter and a friend came home while i was making this i dropped it right off the table kicked it because i wanted to stop it with my foot made it worse and broke off the tip so I ordered from a new one from Amazon, literally while I'm filming this video. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pull out the tip of the hat. You don't need a very pointy tip because we're gonna make ourselves a little pom-pom. So now we're gonna slip on the hat, pop it over to one side. You can choose the seam side or not, but I'm gonna put this rise that we cut down the back so it all tucks in nicely. Fluffing out the tinsel just to make sure I have an idea of how long or how big I need to cut my gnome beard. All right. I have this piece of cast off. Uh, it's just craft store felt, but I just got an idea and it made me as happy as a little girl with a new party dress. Y'all, I'm going to make a bunny. I'm going to make a bunny. All right. So if you're new to cutting faux fur, you're just going to cut about a four inch. Here you go wide piece of faux fur. Now you can cut it into a uh, square, you can cut it into a U shape, it doesn't matter. You can cut it into a V. All of those will work for this project. I just thought the little U shape was gonna be the best because I wanted to see as much of that tinsel as possible. And you can even cut a shorter beard. So mine is about four inches wide by about four inches high. If you want to show off more of the tinsel, just cut it three. Don't go any shorter than that because you lose about a half inch. So now I'm going to cut a two inch by two inch uh, square and I'm just going to make myself a nice little pom pom for the bottom of the or the tip of the gnome hat. I'm just taking hot glue, taking each corner point and gluing it to the center. Try not to put the fur on top of the fur. You just want the faux fur fabric backing to be glued together. All right, now we're gonna hold it there till it sets, take it and bang it on the table a lot of times. You're gonna glue where the seam uh, joins together in the back right to the end of your little hat. and makes all the ugly parts covered. Hold it there until it dries. All right, to put on our nose, which I also had a moment of crisis, indecisive crisis, I'm just gonna split the fur to its fabric backing. I like to pull up a little bit so it covers the top of that nose. And then here's where my dowel cap seemed a little excessive. So I took a one inch wood round instead and I added a generous portion of hot glue and pressed that ball right onto my fur and held it until it set. All right, brush this down and set it aside. Now remember when I had that epiphany of dancing around like a little happy, happy, happy girl in a party dress? So we have some cast off. We have a little bit extra fur. I'm going to make some ears. Okay. Take a little rectangle, fold it over on itself and cut an ear shape. Does it have to be perfect? No, 
guys, girls, doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to create a basic shape like that. Now we're just going to cut our piece of faux fur a tiny bit smaller than that. And it doesn't have to be an ear shape. In fact, don't try it. You're going to cut yourself. So just cut off the top two corners. That's it. Just making sure that the fabric backing is smaller than the ear. That's it. We're just going to add a generous portion of hot glue. I just got the brain, you know, uh, child here to add some wire using the same wire I used making sure I had a good two inches of that wire sticking out the bottom. And then I just glued up the side. You're not even like gluing it onto the fur. You're just gluing it up the side to itself. See that? It's kind of folding over. That's it. Do that all the way around. You can pull it into a little point like I did or just round it off. Both will work all the way around. And then once you have that, you can brush the fur out and then repeat the entire process for this second ear. You don't have to make them bendable. Like you can make really long ones that flop down to the side. Oh, that would be cute too. Just make sure you have enough hot glue to hold this all together and then repeat, making sure you just make a cute little ear shape. Isn't this fun? Dollar Tree projects like this. Like I mentioned, I was waiting on something for Amazon to deliver. They said they were going to be late. I started this. <laughs> I had no plan for this when I started. I hope you think it's as cute as I do. It's sitting next to my fireplace right now. All right, so I'm going to glue this on the underside of the brim of the hat so that when it's time to pack this away, we can easily take this apart and lay it flat. Okay, so now we're just going to pull that hat on, you know, making sure you like where the tinsel sits and everything. All right, making sure it looks good all the way around. Grab an X-Acto knife, go right outside each side of the beard and just make a tiny little hole. Don't need a long, big hole. Pop the wire in and then you can bend these however you want. I repeated it for the other side. Again, not secured so I can easily take this apart and use it on something else or store it away. Now, I think he's cute, but I would love to hear what you think in the comments section below. As always, friend, thank you so much for being here with me. Please like, please share, and please subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi, friends. It's Sarah from ruffleshandrainboots.com, and today mm -hmm, I'm sharing two adorable carrot gnomes. If you'd like to make them, just boop, stick around. Y'all, I crack myself up with this stuff. As always, please give this video a like so that I know you're here crafting. Now, these cuties were actually requested. Somebody loves the tuck gnome pattern and her name is Lorraine. She asked for a couple different ideas for some carrot gnomes. So I first made this guy using the same exact pattern. He looks very different. He's got the little greenery at the top, which I know. It's backwards, and I'll tell you how I made him. But to make this guy, we're gonna start with the tucked gnome pattern. You can get that at the link below. It took me 40 minutes to make two of them. I'm using fill, weight, the pattern, which I've already cut from taupe and um, orange. I'm going to be using a measuring cup and funnel, and I'm also going to be using faux fur, raffia, and scissors, detail tip glue gun, and an X-Acto knife. Woo! That was a lot to say at one time. So to get started, we're gonna slow it down a little bit here and just assemble per the pattern instructions. And this is a 100% hot glue pattern. And the absolute only trick to this entire pattern is that you add enough weight. So I'm going to be sharing and showing you that. For the hat, this is cut in two pieces. This is a great hat for those of you who are new or maybe you don't have enough fabric to do um, on the fold cut. So this is a great style. It just is two seams on the side. If you use a detail tip glue gun, this goes way, way better for you than when I originally created this pattern. I was using a full size glue gun. I will show you my seams. They look magical. They look like I sewed them. None of that has to do with skill. It is all because I have a detail tip glue gun. So you can see here, I'm just using it. I'm not pressing down on this joint. I'm just lightly pressing the fleece, not the glue, if that makes sense. So I'm just basically joining those two together. We don't want the glue to like 
squish out flat. We just want it to join together. All right, so the only tricky part of this pattern is actually the bottom of the body. So all you're going to do, there's like a little tab, it's designed this way, line up the long edge first. I'll tell you that easy as pie, line up that, let that set, and then go to the two sides. All you're going to do is put glue, and it makes like a, a little table, a little shelf, and so you're going to do that on both sides. Before you turn it inside, no, right side out, go ahead and pull. You want to make sure that none of your seams, both at the bottom or on the side, are going to come off or come open. And once you've done that, we're just going to go back to the hat because this has been sitting. Go ahead, check your seams here. I like to pull them apart. Um, you know, when I'm turning it right side out, I'll check it after I poke out the tip because I probably shouldn't use scissors. Whatever. They're like, they're, they're, they're not sharp at the end. All right, so I'm here, I'm just checking my seams. I'm gonna lay this flat, pull apart everything again. You can see how beautiful the seams look. I'm telling you, the glue gun matters. For those of you who are asking, it will, it, I am using a Sure Bonder Detail Tip glue gun. It is corded, it is uh, one temperature, high, and it is available on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. You're going to turn the right side or turn the body right side out as well. Again, you're pulling, checking those flat parts, checking the joins. I have a little extra hot glue there where I accidentally stuck my glue into the hole too far. Um, but you can also just uh, hit that with a heat gun and it will dissolve. For the weight, you're going to use three quarter cup to one cup weight. And let me explain. This is where people fail with the gnomes if your gnomes are falling over even if you have a very narrow base the weight of the body will help it this pattern you're going to poke out with your finger that little bump out and that's going to allow you to put the full amount of weight inside of it make sure that's bumped out and it kind of tapers up at the top because that's how everything is going to fit so nice and neatly so you can see here it's pretty full of just weight right I'm gonna tap it down on the table. I just really throw it. And then I'm going to fill up the very top part with fill. And this is gonna do two things. Number one, we're gonna fill it enough that when you press in, it's gonna bounce back to its original size. And that will also help the shape of our hat form without having to add a lot of stuffing up in the hat. Speaking of the hat, you can just slip this on. And before we like put it in place and everything, I wanna show you um, the difference. So when you pull it up and scrunch up the face for the thing, it doesn't matter about your hat. Look at the difference in this. So what I did is I took this exact same pattern and cut the hat off by two inches. And what that did is it allowed you to see the nice pretty back. So if you have a button or if you want some decorations back there, you can also um, change this pattern to fit that. I'm going to be covering up the seam in the front. You can give this guy a booty and put the seam in the back, but I'm going to be using um, a half wrap around beard of this very, 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 very orange fur I got as a swatch from fabric.com. And all I'm gonna do is cut a rounded off V shape. Yours is gonna vary on whatever you want. Just make sure you're using an X-Acto knife and just cutting the back of that fabric. You won't have any transfer. So I brushed a little bit up, split the fur in the center all the way to its fabric backing. I added my hot glue and then added a three quarter inch wood ball for his nose. The other one I painted orange, which is not true. I just found it in my stash. Apparently I had already painted it orange. What? Whatever. I got a lot of stuff in there. Now Lorraine asked for the use of this raffia, which I had to go and find at the craft store because I didn't have any green. Uh, and I was too lazy to like color it. I'm not sure if you can color it, but anywho, I tried curling it around and that didn't work. So then I just added a line of hot glue or a couple lines of hot glue and then just cut it into pieces and I was gonna trim it up later because I figured that was the easiest way. I wasn't gonna try and line this whole thing up, getting every little piece right in its place. Wasn't gonna happen. I am way too lazy <laughs> for that. So it looks like a big mess right now and I apologize because it is actually a really big mess and it gets messier when you trim it when you give it a haircut I gave it a haircut on both sides so I didn't want a huge bit under the hat poking out so I trimmed that pretty neatly waited for all the glue to dry and then I tried this two ways um, 
I probably should have shared the email with you all, but Lorraine had a few ideas and wanted to see my take on it. So she wanted to try the green in the front and the green raffia in the back as a beard. I tried it as a beard and it was a massive failure. So I went with the orange for a beard and I'm just gluing that down over the front of our guy right here. You can see I'm gonna glue down all along the seam. I'm gonna glue the top and I glue the sides as well. Just because if people play with it, they play with the beard and the hat. Wanna make sure those are on pretty well. So here I'm showing Lorraine, hello Lorraine. I am showing you what it looks like with the green in the front. Let me see if I can get back into frame. I tried bending it, I tried moving it around, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, but it just added so much of a shadow onto the face that I didn't like it. So I flipped it around and I pulled the back down and then I'm gonna give it a scrunch because I'm actually gonna make this like a bendy carrot, like it's a lived in carrot. It's a carrot that has seen its day. All right, so this is how I think I'm gonna work with it. But before I get it on, you know, I gotta, gotta do some changes to the hat here. You can use floral wire, but uh, yeah, my girl Lorraine asked for uh, pipe cleaners because that's what she uses for her grandkids so no one gets poked. So I twisted two pipe cleaners together. I glued it as far as I could up in the tip, making sure I didn't glue the pieces of the hat together on the inside because we will stuff that later. And then I just twisted it and glued it all the way down the seam. I'm using the hot glue silicone thingy so I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm just going to turn up the edge of my fleece right here in front. And again, you don't have to do any of this. You can use the green. Let me actually, let me know in the comments. Would you put the green in the front so it looks like a carrot? Maybe I made the wrong call here. Let me know in the comments. I, I don't know. I just felt it was giving it such a dark shadow over the face that I figured put it in back, give it a nice little piece of interest back there and then let the little face be seen because if you haven't figured this out by now I'm a fan of the gnome face with no eyes all right so once I have that I'm just going to tuck a little bit of polyfill right up in the very tip of the hat I'm using yeah I know the scissors but just don't poke a hole in your hat and it's totally fine just just saying all right, so you can see it's not a lot of polyfill up there. I'm just bending the tip before I stuff a little bit more in because we have the body to do a lot of that fill for us. All right, so now I'm just going to pull this down all the way down. I'm going to scrunch it in the front and then I'm going to attach this right to the front of the face with just a little glue on the top of the nose and then press that hat right down. I did glue down the back of my carrot, <laughs> my carrot top uh, as well. And then I glued down the sides. So I had originally cut arms for this, but I just felt that it was, it was a lot going on. So I didn't use the arms. The pattern has arms, so don't worry, they're there. But, um, and if you do, hey, if you make a, uh, a gnome with the pattern, I'd love to see it. We have the DIY Gnomes and Crafts with Other Friends Facebook group. It's 20,000 plus people and it's the nicest, most pleasant, inspiring place. I'll put a link down below in the comments. Come join us and then show me all what you've made because I love them. So here you can see I just bent the little hat and you can see those clean seams and the little green in the back. Hello, little fella. He's got a nice sturdy base. You can see his friend back there as well. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments if you like this. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffleshandrainboots.com and today I'm sharing a new pattern, the knockout stout in a bunny gnome. If you'd like to make it, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting. This is the guy we're making today. So you can sew or glue this pattern. And it has these big floppy ears that you can either wire or, you know, put down to the side or up in the top. And it, of course, has to have, you know, 
cute little badonk badonk back there. So I'm going to sew this one. Again, I will share a non-sewn version of this pattern as well. So if you're new to sewing, like you're borrowing somebody's sewing machine, the only thing you have to remember is this, start and reverse your stitches. When you're following the pattern for the body, you're just going in two straight lines. That's it. The only trick here is you're going to turn the piece when you get to the bend in the body shape. Isn't that easy? Again, start and reverse those stitches and then be sure to lock them all in place at the end by reversing again. So we're left with this little pouch. We're going to pull it apart. We're going to put this seam right in the center and then we're going to squish this part down. Look at that. It makes a pretty diamond, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cutting up that diamond. I'm just gonna measure one inch down from these stitches, not from the edge of the fabric, and I'm just making a mark here for you. You don't have to use Sharpie on yours. You just make a mark with chalk or pen or pencil, anything. Pin it and then sew right on the lines that you made. Be sure to start and reverse those stitches, locking them in place. Now we're just gonna cut one quarter inch to the opposite or to the outside side of these little stitches and it looks like this. All right, pull it apart. We're gonna turn it right sides out and now you're left with this beautiful rectangle solid bottom that we can make a very chunky guy. Now in the hat, whether you put the bunny edition on or just make the hat as you want, you can vary the brim. Again, if you're varying the brim, this is it. You start, you reverse your stitches. You can see how slow I'm going. This is how I actually sew. I am not an expert uh, seamstress, okay? I only sew for crafts and the reason I like to do it is because it's way faster than hot gluing them. That said, you can do both. All right, so I cut my extra stitches off and now we're gonna put these two hat pieces right sides together. So either side showing will have the brim. I'm gonna mark where it says in the pattern to not add ears below. Speaking of ears, these are super simple. In the pattern, I do recommend you use two pieces of fleece, one color, two colors, whatever you want. I'm using a cotton and a fleece. And I have a lot of tips in this pattern on how you should cut things, and that is because we need it to be stretchy. Now here's just a tip, you don't have to do this. If you have pinking shears, get the rounded bits. It makes it a little easier. If you don't have pinking shears, just cut little triangle on all the curved parts of the ears up there at the top and just pull it off, see that? So you're gonna make two of these ears and then once you have, use a pair of needle nose pliers, stick them all the way inside, grab the top and then watch. Look how easy this is. Do not pull on these two flappity flap flaps right here. So all you need to do is just boop, straight down, straight away from you. Rub the entire thing in between your fingers. Now here's a point, you can top stitch this, which just means you go all the way around the outside, locking these two pieces together. You can stuff these and you can add wire. The pattern accounts for all of those options. So now we're going to assemble the hat. So we haven't sewn anything or glued anything yet. We're just going to put the ears in through the center of the hat and you're going to want to catch the stitching. So what I mean by that is the little two areas that were open for us to sew and flip are going to be sticking out the top of the actual body of the hat, okay? So once you have them even, all you're gonna do is pin it all in place and guess what? Take it to your sewing machine or glue it. Either way, it's super easy. If you're taking it to your sewing machine, you can sew with a half inch or a quarter inch allowance, whatever you're comfortable with. Fleece is the most forgiving fabric I've ever worked with or will. Cut off your extra strings, flip it right sides out, and here you have a nice little bunny hat. Now the pattern also allows for a couple variations in where you place the ears. Now we need regular no making stuff, some weight, some polyfill, we'll need scissors and a glue gun. Um, for a nose, you're going to either use a one inch wood ball or you can create your own fabric nose. Um, I'm, I'll share both of the versions, but the fabric nose is kind of what I'm doing for this one. Some embroidery thread, a needle, and look, our two pieces we made. We're gonna take the body and add at least one cup of poly pellets. These are non-odor, non-moisture absorbing. Tamp them down on the table and then stuffity, stuff, stuff, stuff. 
you will want to stuff more than you think you want to stuff because polyfill breaks down over time. When you squeeze it, it should bounce back to its original size. I'm going to take embroidery thread and an embroidery or a darning needle and I'm going to stay about one inch from the top edge of the fabric and just make a running stitch, which is just going in and out, in and out. There's no knot on the end of that thread. We're just going to go all the way around, and the only trick here is you have to end right next to where you started. Pull that taut, stuffing all the stuffing down in there. Uh, I am a paranoid person. I knot it. I double knot it. I wrap it. I use glue. Uh, Call me parent. It's okay. I just don't want that body to ever, you know, burst from all the squishing. Anyway, I'm put a little glue, tie an extra knot, cut it off. Now the gnome I'm or the nose I'm using can be like this. Like this one is made with the one inch wood ball, or we can take a three by three piece of flannel, knit, whatever you have on hand, fleece even, and you're going to make a running stitch in a circle and stuff that a lot. So the best part about using fabric noses is you can actually mold them to whatever shape you want. I made mine a little oval, tied it off, and set it aside. I'm going to cut a three inch uh, three inch wide by three inch tall beard in a U shape. Now, you don't have to draw on the back of it. This is for your purposes. You also don't even have to create a U-shape. In other videos with this pattern, I'll share some of the other sizes and shapes that I made. Just to cut it out, you're using an X-Acto knife and just pulling it apart. I will say you are going to put the gnome beard a little higher on this body because we got a chunky fellow here, okay? So don't glue it down yet because especially if you have made this cool fabric nose, you're going to create a maybe half inch slit here. And let me just make sure you can see it goes all the way through. There's my finger. And you're going to take that back part. We didn't cut off any of the extra fabric or those strings, right? You're going to take that pull it through the back and then glue that down so it looks like a demigorgon from Stranger Things. I should get points when I reference pop culture. Anyway, if you like that, give me a like on the video. Okay, so I'm just gluing that down and now it's time to glue the entire gnome beard to the body. You can see I left the pin in and now I'm gonna take it out because now I know where I need to put it. Make sure you get all the sides and really squish it on there. Look how cute it looks already. Oh my goodness. If you want to add whiskers, you absolutely can with a little embroidery thread cut to about five inches long. I say five inches long because inevitably I want it shorter and I mess it up. So I'm going to use some matte Mod Podge and the longest paintbrush I could find. I don't know why. And I just made sure to coat those on either side and let them dry. I did have to cut them down a little bit for my liking. But again, this is all about personal preference. You do you. And I'm going to make a little X pattern, which is two of them, but not yet. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to make a pom pom bunny tail using a two by two inch square of faux fur that matches my beard. I'm going to take the detailed tip glue gun and point every corner right to the center. Just glue, move it in. And then once it's all together, you're just going to add a bit of hot glue in the center and squish it all into a flower. That's going to give us a nice little round thing. We can rub in between our fingers, shake it out on the table, and then this is like my favorite part. Time to give it a haircut. I am no trained hairdresser, so you can see I massacred that. But it looks really cute in the end. <laughs> but be sure to save all that for stuffing something later. We're not going to glue that on yet because we want to make sure that this part gets on first. I'm going to pull the hat down pretty far on this body because I want to scrunch. You can have a taller gnome. Just be sure to put your hand up inside there and pull back that little bump that we have uh, when we tied off the body. All right, so now I'm going to be gluing on this hat. I like to make sure I get the scrunches, which means I'm going to glue it two places on front, right above the beard, on the body right here, and on the top of the nose. And I am using my glue gun to spread out that glue so we don't have any big dollops of glue anywhere. And now that I got the nose, I'm gonna scrunch that front into place and I'm going to let that dry. Then when it's dry, I can turn around and do the entire back. I do it along that seam so that I can make sure no hot glue is showing. Pull that down, let it dry, and then do the sides. 
So we're just going to make sure that we have the little seam tucked in up under there and press each of those down. Isn't this easy? This is super easy. And this doesn't take very long, this project, because it's sewn. Um, and it's easy. I love easy stuff. Glue on that bunny tail. And hey, we're not done because now we get to put on the whiskers. So we want to make sure we get them up under whatever nose you're using. So you just use the tiniest bit of hot glue. And you can even pick up the nose if you don't have any space between the beard and it. Because we really don't want to get any hot glue inside that faux fur. So I'm just going to pop this one up under here in an X fashion. And then I let that sit and dry. For decorations, I'm adding these paper flowers left over from the Highland Cow tutorial, and I'm just going to add a little bit, maybe like an inch and a half of that wire on, and that's just going to give me a little extra stability. I poke a hole in the top of the hat next to the seam with this, that same darning needle that I used. I pop in the wire, and then I'm going to add a bit of hot glue just to keep it there. So FYI, make sure you don't get it in front of the ear, otherwise it won't flop over really well. In case you want to do flippity floppity ears. I don't know. In other videos, I will show you how to wire them. They're super cute. But here's our guy. He didn't take very long, did he? But oh, look at him. He's precious. That's what I think. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Down below, you can get the pattern for this stout gnome. And as always, I really appreciate you being here with me. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun. Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots, and today we are going to be making this adorable Easter gnome treat jar. If you'd like to make it, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so that I know you're here. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. We like to have a lot of fun, like when we make these adorable cuties using items from the Dollar Tree and our craft room. If you have a huge craft stash like I do, oh, look at this little tail. We're gonna make that out of the same stuff we're using for this guy. Speaking of what we're using, I have to tell you, I'm still trying to use up all the stuff I moved from Washington to Texas. So I'm going to use this Dollar Tree craft jar and it's like a mini jar with a lid, but it's plastic, so it's safe for all ages. This label came off so easy, and if you're like me, that made a little happy bit to your day. Do save the lid if you're using this, because I'm going to show you something else. So I'm going to be using a piece of white stiff felt, something for a nose. I'm going to use a wood ball, Mongolian faux fur or yarn. You're going to need some ribbon scraps and premium felt to get this at the craft store. It's the 9 by 12 and it's a little thicker than the normal craft felt for kids. We're just going to measure around your jar. So if you're using these Dollar Tree jar, whoa, if you're using these Dollar Tree jars, that's a 10 inch wide to allow for a seam allowance. And I'm going to measure it five and a half inches high. This is going to be my hat. So all I'm just going to do is cut that out into an easy peasy rectangle. No rise cuts, no triangles, no form fitting, no pie that you have to use to figure out circumference uh, multiplied. We're just going to cut a rectangle. Do save the rest of that because we're going to do a couple things with it. Now, for the beard, you can glue it directly to the jar or do what I'm going to do. Either way, I cut a three inch wide by three inch tall v-shaped beard and i said i'm using mongolian fur but you can use anything you have on hand including brushed out yarn so if you're new to cutting faux fur put the pile facing down and just use an exacto knife to cut the fur fabric backing all right don't know what happened with the camera right there must have i don't know I just like skipped a dimension i think anyway you can glue it there or you can cover the jar so I'm going to cover the jar and just one thing to make it easy, you're just going to cover to the curves on both the top and the bottom. Makes it super simple and super quick to do. So you can bang out a lot of these if you need to for the grandkids or for a little prize and an Easter egg hunt. All right, so I'm just going to glue that all the way down along the bottom and the top and just squishing it in. No one's going to see the top. Now for the beard, I'm going to cover up my line in front so it looks nice and finished in the back for our tail. And then, as you might mention or might guess, I'm just going to glue this right to the front of that felt. 
Do make sure you're not in the, like too high, just the top of the felt is totally fine. And I'm just lining it up so that I can cover up that entire line. We're gonna cover up the very top. All right, so I'm just making sure that all of the sides are down before we move on. This is our body. For the nose, you are just gonna split the fur to the fabric backing. You can do this with a comb or your fingernail. All we're gonna do is measure about three quarters of an inch down to an inch, and that way we will be sure to capture our hat and have a really secure join. A little hot glue onto that fabric backing, press on the nose, and then set the body aside. All right, so I am going to create ears for my little bunny jar, and uh, no pattern is needed. All you have to do is create an oval with two points and then lop one of them off. That's all you got. It's super simple. And then um, once I had those two, I'm going to put them because they're not even. If you look real close at my guy, he's he's not perfect. But I'm just going to cut two smaller ones out of the stiff felt. And so if you don't have stiff felt, you can add a wire to the inside of these ears in between the two layers if you want. A pipe cleaner would be cute, all fuzzy. But we're just going to glue these together. That's it. Now, while I'm gluing this together, I just wanted to mention, if you haven't joined us in the Facebook group, look in the description box down below. We sure would love to have you. We share everything there, not just gnomes, not just crafts. We get advice, and it's a very kind group of men and women who just share the love of crafting. Be sure to check the uh, description box below. All right, so we can set those aside now and move back to our hat. As a reminder, this is 10 by 5.5 inches tall, and I was thinking I was just going to tie it at the top, but then I was reminded of third grade crafting. We made uh, valentines for our parents, and this is how we made the pouches. So you're just going to cut little slits after you fold over one side of the uh, top of the rectangle, so it's about an inch down, and then you're just going to cut maybe quarter of an inch, because again, it's going to double, right? When we open it up, boom. Look at that. And we're just going to slip in some extra ribbon you have on hand. So I have this uh, blue and white. I actually got an entire box of remnants of ribbons. So if anybody has some ideas for ribbon remnants, pop them down below in the comments section. I'm going to need a few ideas for that. All right. So we're just going in and out, in and out. We're going to start on the outside and, and end on the inside. And the reason is because we're going to fold over um, this seam in the back and it's going to just make it easier to tie. If you have, you know, miscounted or misthreaded, don't worry. I have made a couple of these and you'll be able to fix your mistake. No problem. Even after you glue it up. All right. Don't mention like that big crease in the felt. I figured no one would actually see it once it was all tied up, but which is going to be our secret. All right, so we made sure that nothing changed and we can still fit it around the nose. And then we're just going to pop a little bit of glue here and let that sit. So if we don't let the hot glue sit, we have a danger of just moving it. So I am going to make sure that it still fits over the little nose the way I want to. So I pop it back on just to make sure I didn't glue it too narrow. And then I'm just going to glue this back up. Easy peasy, right? If you are a member of the Facebook group, let us know down in the comments section. I just think it's like one of the most pleasant places on the internet right now. We don't do anything heavy. We help each other. Let me know if you like, like being a part of that group. Again, it's called DIY Gnomes and Other Crafts with Friends. All right, once that is all glued up, again, I test fit this thing 622 times, but I'm just making sure I can get it over the nose and then tip it down and back for a nice little hat style. But you know what this allows me to do? See where to place the ears. Isn't that nice? So all we're gonna do for the ears, you don't have to mark on yours, but I just wanted to show you. You can actually mark on the felt, just make a little line, and then that way you can just Fold it over and cut it or put something in between it and use an X-Acto knife, whatever you have on hand. But I'm just going to make these two little cuts. And then, I don't know why I got the cutting mat out. Um, but I'm just going to make these two little cuts and we're going to tuck the ears right in here. So you add a little bit of glue either before you squish it in or after. And I'm just going to hold that while the glue dries. If you would like to pull them back a little bit, you can add a little glue back here also for stability. 
For those of you wondering, that is a detail tip glue gun from Surebonder. I get it on Amazon. I love them. And uh, you can ask other people, but I think it's one of the most well-made glue guns for small crafts. Um, and it lasts quite a while. All right, so I'm just going to tuck this on. And I like to put a little glue over like where the nose is going to be right on the hat. But we're going to move in the back first. I'm just going to glue this down all the way around. Make sure you don't get that ribbon in there. And that is going to be our structure for the stability of our hat. All right, when you squish it up, this is what it's going to look like. You can tie it into the bow and back, tie it in front, make a knot, whatever you'd like to do. Um, there you go. And then you can decorate it with whatever you would like as well. But I think it needs something. Like, here's he's cute. Don't get me wrong. Super cute. But he doesn't have a tail. So we have to remedy that. You can use a pom-pom or you can just cut off one square inch of the same faux fur you were using and take the hot glue gun to the corners and turn them all into the center. Ready? You can use a face mask spatula or a wood stick to make sure you don't glue your fingers into this nice little poof ball we're making. But once you get all corners in, you just add a little bit more glue and squish the entire thing together. Once dry, roll it between your hands, give it a haircut. This is one of my favorite parts. And then you just glue it to the, the bunny booty. Ready? Just squish it on there. I'm just hiding the seam that I created. And I give it a little fluff and the bottom is done. Look at him. Now he's ready to go, right? Or we could add extra because come on, I have these left over from the Highland Cow tutorial and I thought those blues kind of match. So yep, I'm just gonna glue on. I just cut the wires off of them and I'm gonna glue four or five of these guys on, whatever I had left <laughs> from that. Again, I'm trying to use everything up in my craft room. And now he's done. Where is he? Is he? No, he's not because he needs some trees inside. I love these rock candies. So I'm gonna pop some of these in here along with a couple of other little treats for my daughter. And then you can tie it up. And when you tie it up, it like makes it all look nice. Add a little bow in front or back. And then guess what? Now he's done. <laughs> I think he's cute, but I would love to hear what you think. Let me know down in the comments below when you make it. Look at that bunny booty. As always, thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun. And that is it for our Easter compilation. What do you think? Which one of these fun Easter gnomes was your favorite? As always, I sincerely appreciate you being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.